tight. Oh, that's not a straight line. Good afternoon, lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Ah, getting on, getting on. Trying, trying to get jobs finished before the end of October. <clears throat> Just starting now in the, <clears throat> excuse me. I just shook my purple canes and a load of white fly have come out and gone down there. Yeah, I'm just starting in the broad bean bed. In terms of bed prep, about two weeks ago, I think it was, was it two weeks ago when I was doing the chop and drop video? I prepped this bed and the garlic bed, and we'll go over to the garlic as well in a second. Quite simply, all I did was I gave the ground a little bit of a tickle, chopped a load of chicken pellets over, raked them in. The ground was really quite moist at that stage. And I've, oh, I really, really pre would have preferred to have got my broad beans and the garlic in at the beginning of October. However, <coughs> we were getting really, really wet. So the beds were prepped covered with the nets, A, to stop the foxes and cats getting in to poop, but also just to protect the beds from the, the real pelting rain a bit. They've done that job great. The soil is moist, but it's not sopping, and also it hasn't been compacted. In other parts of the garden that aren't covered, you can see even now, where are we at the end of October, any bits of uncovered ground are already crusting from just being battered by the rain. So, and then, and then the lovely Kai has just popped over. She's come over to harvest my nasturtiums. Oh, let me show you them quickly. They're so beautiful. Aren't they just the most beautiful splash of colour? So this was where I had all the horizontal squash. All of these nasturtiums self-seeded. I let them do what they want because they weren't impeding the squash production. And it's just a delight to have them at this time of year. This is so pretty. Look at those gorgeous. And then that much deeper, darker orange over there. Beautiful. So these will not overwinter. The first sign of frost we have, the whole lot will be done for. I will harvest any of the seeds. I like the seeds as a sort of a... A substitute for capers. It's the one thing that I do enjoy pickled. Generally can't stand pickles. So there's a lot of material here to sort of chop and add to compost but I was mentioning them to Kai the other day and she came over and was cooing at the lovely sight of them. There's still quite a few over there too in the spare squash bed. Oh look at you pretty thing. Sorry, I just got distracted. Oh, you're so lovely. Yeah, so um, she asked me if I, if I could spare some of the leaves because she'll make pesto. And I said, yes, please, please, please do. So she's just been over. Now, now you can see empty stalks <laughs> and, and grabbed a load. 
but she's a bit busy today so what I've suggested is I'm going to just leave this patch as it is now for the next few days and I'm going to harvest a load and drop them off at her place she can come back and harvest some more because yeah let's make the most of them she can have her pesto and I can have my capers gorgeous bit of colour eh so while Kay was doing sorry not Kay Kai have I been saying Kay I meant Kai so while Kai's been harvesting there we were chatting catching up as we do uh, actually it was just it was really really lovely to spend some time together chatting and I thought well rather than just me stand and chat while she's harvesting I'll pop over into the now ex whoopla cocoa de pan pole bed to harvest all my lovely oh look at them when they're gorgeous this is all my lovely seed saving pods the masses did you hear that? I said masses. Um, fab, I love it. <sighs> it's that thing, isn't it? I, 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 one of, oh, I've said it so many times, but I really mean it. It really means the world to me as well. What I love about gardening in a communal space is the friendships that form. You know, there's quite a few people down here who are, they're sort of passing acquaintances. We'll always say hello, have a bit of a chat. How are the kids? How's your mum and dad? You know, it's kind of it. But then there are other folk down here who they've become real friends, you know, friends outside of the garden and outside of gardening. And Kai, oh, she's always been one of those. When we, when we first met, um, I don't know how it came up in the first place, but we'd both done the same art foundation course all those years ago. So we immediately had art as a connection and yeah I've been friends since so yeah really lovely catch up love 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 chatting in the garden but even better if I can chat and be doing something at the same time so the pair of us were bums up heads down harvesting and chatting right broad beans so <clears throat> I've got <clears throat> I've got my saved seeds here these were harvested well the plants were harvested at the end of May for the eating beans. For the seed saving beans, I left the plants in place until, I think it was the end of July. It might have even been longer because I was away at the end of July, wasn't I? But they were just left on the plants to dry and dry and dry. They were gathered, podded, taken home, spread out to make sure they were absolutely properly dry. Three day freeze out they came come back to room temperature they're now ready for sewing I've got a separate jar because when I earmark my plants for saving this plant had really whopping great pods on and lovely big beans inside so I'm going to sew these as a separate row which I will mark and let's see if they come as big this year but otherwise in terms of variety I have for years used bog standard Aqua Dolce Claudia. It's the absolute bog standard autumn sowing broad bean. Great. They always do great for me. And then about three years ago, I also added in to my collection Aqua Dolce Super, which are uh, the pods are a little bit longer than Aqua Dolce Claudia. And I would say on average had about two more beans per pod in. So for the same amount of growing space, same amount of pods on the plant, I was getting two more beans per pod over that. So over the whole plant, maybe I was getting 20, 30 extra beans. Yay! Uh, well worth it. However, <laughs> in the seed saving process, at, when was it last year or the year before, I knocked them all over and they ended up mixed up. So they could be Aquadolce Claudia, they could be Super Aquadolce. Either way, happy. Now, quickly in terms of spacing, you saw I've put my rows, row markers out and I've scooched out a drill for each of the four rows. My four rows are hand span, which is about, it's about 18 centimetres. It's really stingy. I'm really stingy, but they seem to do okay. I would say probably between your rows, you would like 25 centimetres to 
30 centimetres. Between plants, I'll do another hand span. So again, 18 to 20 centimetres. Again, I'm really stingy, but it seems to work okay. And the other thing I'll be doing today, I need to actually get my gloves off for a little bit. Ooh, it's getting chilly and dark. I hope it's not gonna rain. Um, yeah, gloves off for some dexterity. I'm going to do, again, this autumn, what I did last autumn for mouse stealing prevention. Now we've got a couple of new cats on the block. You've seen Kay's cats and apparently they're quite good mouses. Even so, I'm not taking any risks. You see that? It's chilli powder. It's just bog standard chilli powder you find at you know, the market for your cooking. So I'll pop each seed in and then I'll give it a little sprinkle on top of the seed before I then cover it. Hopefully to deter the mice. And when I did it last year, I had complete germination, not a single bean stolen. I hope I haven't jinxed myself. Uh, what else do I need to... Ah, yeah, and the other thing to say, just very quickly, I always sow in autumn. I have done spring sowings years and years and years ago, but nowadays I always sow my broad beans in the autumn because it gives me an earlier crop. I'll crop these by the end of May, which then means, boom, I can get another crop in and, and have pretty much the whole growing season next year with a second crop. I'm getting two crops for one bed by doing my um, broad beans in the autumn. In terms of the winter and their hardiness, <clears throat> I'll put the nets back on them now. Is that rain? I might have to put you all inside. <clears throat> Just very quickly, I'll put the nets. <laughs> it's raining. You're going in the shed. Come on. Oh, I'm sure this wasn't forecast. Anyway, just quickly now um, about the nets. I put the nets on now because that ground is freshly disturbed. Cats, foxes, they'll poo there or the foxes. One of the theories with foxes is when they see freshly disturbed ground, they think it's another fox's kill that's been buried. So they'll go and look for it. Get the nets on to protect the bare soil from them protect it from the rain until I've got time to get organised with some mulch <clears throat> but also beg your pardon um, what I found uh, was it in terms of netting them over the winter I think I discovered this about five or six years ago for myself was that the nets gave them just a tiny little bit of protection I think partly, not hugely sort of safe from frost, but against those really cold winter winds that whip across this site. And the first year that I had nets on them and, and just sort of forgot to take them off as we got into winter, they ended up accidentally staying on over the whole winter. All of the, all of the plants, hey buddy, all of the plants did much better than my plants had done for the previous two winters. So I thought, oh, I wonder, is it that little bit of protection, frost, wind, lashing rain, whatever? So subsequent to that, I've always just left the nets on over winter and it does seem to just give them a little bit of a help over the coldest, wettest, windiest months. And then come the spring, whip the nets off, let the bees in, brilliant. Right, I'm gonna go out in the rain and get this done. I'll see how the ring gets on and then hopefully it'll ease up and we can go and plant some garlic. I just want to get this all done today. Right. Okay, Rusty, you and everyone stay in the shed. I'm going to go and plant, okay? Yeah, he approves.
biggest ones. Come on, big bastards. And so on for two more rounds. Oh, I'm so glad the rain has stopped for now at least. <clears throat> okay, garlic bed. Exactly the same prep as the ball bean bed. Bit of a tickle. It had quite a bit of a tickle because I got the spuds out. Dried chicken manure pellets raked in, covered. It's nice and moist, it's not sopping. Put my straight lines out as I was mentioning in the tool video the other day it just helps me to sort of make the most of each bed if I didn't put the lines in I was just chucking seeds around I might not make the most of the space this year I'm actually going to give all the garlic a little bit more space than I have done in the past so in the past I've given them about 15 centimeters between cloves and 15 centimeters between rows, rows and cloves. This year I'm doing a handspan, so it's more like 18. I just wonder if, I mean I've generally had good garlic harvests. This year wasn't great because I really, I was so late getting it out, so so late. I was about to do it, then we had rain and then I was away and then I got round to it and a lot of them had rotted. I was about, I would say I was three to four weeks late on the harvest. I had harvested some before that and they were beautiful. So this front row, I've tried to organise it. This front row is my violette. That's from that original clove of garlic I brought back from Nice in 2017 and planted in October of 2017. But yeah, not, not a lot of garlic to go around this year. At least there's enough to plant <clears throat> and I have got maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 bulbs to eat. Anyway, so yes, eat. <sighs> so I'm a bit all over the place. I'm just, I'm just really aware that if it starts to rain, I want to get on. So, each, for anyone who's not planted garlic before, I don't mean this to be patronising for those who have, but if you've never planted garlic before, You've got your whole garlic bulb. Just riffle it apart and separate it into its individual cloves. Don't worry about removing any of the paper. Um, spacing wise, like I said, about 18 to 20 centimeters in either direction. Now, when it comes to planting, it's back to the tool video again. I've got my good old trusty dibber. I want to plant them twice the depth of the clove so if my if my hand is the surface of the soil I want to go one two plant it there so there's two clove heights above it <clears throat> partly that'll stop the pigeons tugging them out but it just gives them a really good start I use the dibber to make my hole rather than just push them in because the, the bottom of the garlic there where our lovely roots are going to come from. I don't want to risk damaging that by just shoving it in and forcing it onto a stone that's down there. I mean I'm not being overly precious about it 
but by the same token I don't want to damage it. I'm going to rely on this growing its roots and turning into a nice clove of gar bulb of garlic, bulb of garlic. Um, yes, autumn planting, they will be in the ground until about, hopefully about the end of May I will harvest. Some people harvest later, but here on our site I've found over the years, I've kind of brought the harvest earlier and earlier and earlier to avoid white rot. And if I harvest by the end of May, great, I generally avoid it. They will need um, some cold over the winter. A frost will help. The, I don't know how this magic happens. It is witchcraft in the soil. <laughs> um, but um, some frost in the ground will help to, as, as this, uh, the big sort of bulb is forming, it will help that to split into individual cloves. If we don't get a really hard frost and I end up harvesting and they're all coming up as like a solid bulb instead of lots of little cloves, no matter, it's still edible. It just means that when I cut into it, I might have to freeze some of it if I'm not using it straight away. Generally that doesn't happen. I mean, not the lack of frost coming out as a whole bulb, but generally I don't freeze it because I get through so much garlic anyway, I'll more than happily use it up cook something else. So, I need to go on and plant. <clears throat> a little bit more laborious than having, than doing the broad beans, because every single one, I'm going to put my gloves on again because I'm going right into the soil, um, yeah because every single one is done individually rather than say with the broad beans where I can walk, standing up, walk along the row and just drop beans into the row. It was raining when I did the broad beans, well, as you saw, but, um, and I was a bit, I was kind of momentarily concerned about the chilli powder. However, it wasn't raining hard enough to dissolve the chilli powder as I scattered it. So hopefully they should be okay. As we go into late autumn into winter, I will now start to be looking out for leaves to rake up grass clippings, as I was mentioning earlier, to get mulch onto these beds. But one of the really, really beautiful things, oh, and the sun's coming out, really, this does make it perfect. I was mentioning about sowing broad beans now in order to get a nice early harvest, in order to get a second crop into that bed next year, brilliant always always being practical but the other thing about the broad beans and especially the garlic is it's so lovely to get to this time of the year when oh let's just start with a strimmer again yeah we get to this time of year and there's a sort of melancholy isn't there as we're taking out and chopping up plants and it sort of feels like we're destroying the garden Bare areas are appearing, bare areas are getting covered up in cardboard. Yeah, it's very much that sort of slight melancholy of saying goodbye to the garden. But sowing broad beans and planting garlic, especially on a day like today when the sun has decided to come back out again, it just gives me this wonderful, wonderful feeling of, of optimistic joy again to be planting again to be anticipating some new plants who said it i don't know who said it but there's that famous quote isn't there is um to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow and it's so true and as this garlic starts to shoot the green of the shoots, it's that beautiful acid, limey, bright, bright green when everything else around is turning, you know, shades of brown, dark, dark brown of muddy beds, the dark greens of the brassicas. To have this one bed in the garden that is so full of life and exuberance. Uh, I, I really, really do love it. And I think, you know, <laughs> quite possibly, even if I wasn't a huge fan of garlic, I'd plant it anyway at this time of year.
purely for that. Thank goodness I've got this new garden stool. <laughs> And just as I did with the broad beans, when I finish planting them all, I get the nets back on, stopping the foxes, stopping the cats, stopping the pelting rain. But hopefully I can get some mulch from somewhere soon, get the mulch on, and at that stage, when they're shooting as well, get the covers off so I can really, really appreciate their beautiful shoots as we go into the dark months. I'm beginning to tidy up after myself, but I just want to show you something because it's too cute. When I took the nets off brassicas the other day, they were quite wet, so I haven't folded them and packed them into the shed yet. Instead, I sort of bung them in the cold frame where they can dry out. Do you see what I see? <laughs> oh, sweet girl. Are you cosy in there, Rosie? Cosy Rosie. <laughs> Is it warm in the cold frame, little one? I don't know how comfy env that environment is actually sitting. I don't know if you can just make it out there, but there underneath, that's the wine crate that they keep on the deck. So our little Rosie has found herself a nest in my cold frame. I was contemplating closing all the windows up today, <laughs> but I shan't now. You snooze away happily, little one, after you've done your bathing. She's such a darling, sweet wee scrap of a thing. She can have the cold frame for a few more days. But it is going to get shut up soon because it's starting to get quite chilly at night. <clears throat> Yay! I'm really glad finally to have got the broad beans and the garlic in. <sighs> That's it. I've done the garden now for this year. <laughs> As if there's so much clearing up to do. The weeds in main bed three and main bed four are awful, truly awful for me, for my standards. But they really are. But you know what? fine they're just weeds they're not in the way of any crops none of them are going to seed at the moment that's what i'm keeping an eye on i'll just get on with it in the coming weeks um oh and by the way yes i'm finally back on the day bed because a couple of rows of lavender bags i've taken them down to take home and it struck me when i was doing them because literally every time i've visited in the last two or three weeks or so I'm lugging the granny trolley home, full of stuff. Pounds and pounds of potatoes, squash, there's still loads in here and all the lavender to get home. And I was thinking, it's like the great autumn migration, isn't it? With all this stuff now migrates to my home. And before you know it, oh my goodness, it'll be the spring migration when all those seedlings that I bring on at home have to get brought down here. I wish my house was one of these right next door. <sighs> what a lovely session, what a lovely session. A bit of sunshine after those few drops of rain. Friendship, the gorgeous cats, 
harvests, the optimism of planting and sowing again. Days like today, oh, they just make me absolutely, it's laid out on the table for me just how blessed I am. I do count my blessings. Anyway, lovely people in La La Land, I think it's time for me to go. I've got a lot of tidying up to do after myself. All the tools that I got out this morning to show you in that previous video, they're all still out there. <laughs> they need putting away. Actually, I brought a couple in, but the rest need putting away. I've got, yeah, I've got kit everywhere. It's tidy up time. So, I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. Gosh, we're careening towards the end of the month, aren't we? So, yeah, I'll probably see you at the end of the month. Until then, please look after yourselves. If you can get some outside time in your gardens before the worst of the weather sets in, do. Oh, and for all of you in the Southern Hemisphere, yay, yay, spring really, really, really is here. And you're all starting to plant out, aren't you? Brilliant. Enjoy every second of it, whichever hemisphere you're in. Cheerio.